Welcome back and thank you very much for your time. If it's your birthday today, happy, happy birthday to you. And if you have an anniversary as well, congratulations to you. Big fat congratulations to our group CEO, uh, Beatrice uh, Echampoma Ajimai, for being honored over the weekend for International Women's Day. Daily Guide this morning says, Nana pays visit to was two robbers die in shootout with police apology retraction is on page three and chief's cops stolen four shot free education made me prime minister that's what the prime minister dr keith uh Rowley, and his wife from trinidad and tobago over the 63rd anniversary uh, held in kumasi over the weekend had to say mpp dumps 15 aspirants in the eastern region including mr philip addison who uh, went to court to fight the 2012 election petition an adaco total deal no complete tax recovery no approval of sale cso to government and uh, countries must produce quality goods for uh, african free trade agreement market and oh, that's on the front page of the bnft the ghanaian times will resist lgbt conference in ghana uh, vows global evangelical church it comes with a photo of reverend agbenuvo and first lady acknowledges role of women in national development on the occasion of the international women's day government addressing infrastructure deficit in shs's president and JHS student stabs teenager to death over loaf of bread. The Finder newspaper abide by COVID-2019 safety rules. President Ekufuado appeals to Ghanaians. First Lady salutes Ghanaian women on International Women's Day and clearing of goods through Unipass progressing well. Government renegotiating codified conditions of service for health professionals, according to the minister. The Daily Graphic front page says graphic at 70. It comes with a lot of their uh, very exciting stories over the years. Graphic is 70 years. Speaker launches the anniversary today. Congratulations to all our folks at Graphic, Mr. Atuafo, Mr. Sowa, and everybody else at Graphic that we know. Happy anniversary to you, those who have worked there before, those who are now aspiring to work there, and those who work there now. Happy anniversary. President Lord Kumasi, resident for successful independence celebrations. Beautiful, beautiful celebration. Well organized and rather colorful celebrations. Rights group call for gender equality on the occasion of uh, International Women's Day. It comes with a photo of uh, Cynthia Mamley Morrison, Minister for Gender, Children and Social Protection. My guest this morning is the executive director of the Dankwa Institute and a deputy national communications director of the NPP, Mr. Richard Ahiagba. Also, we'll receive the NDC's rep shortly and uh, you can always send us your thoughts and comments on uh, 020216663. That's 020216663. This is uh, TV3 New Day, special edition for International Women's Day. And uh, as we celebrate all the women in Ghana, we'd like to say a big one to our first lady, um, Mama Rebecca, also to the wife of the vice president, Nadia Samira, the chief of staff, who was also a woman, uh, Madame Ofrema Opari, and to all women, uh, my own mother and my wife as well, and to, to every woman as well. Richard, good morning. Welcome. Very good morning to Fist you. Fist bump, yeah. We're, we, are adhering, we are adhering to the COVID-2019 Yes, rules. yes, yes. How I have you been? Well, I've been good. I've been good, and uh, I've been in Kumasi, got back yesterday. Mm. Uh, was part of what I think is truly historic moment for our country. Uh, I want to congratulate all Ghanaians and especially the people of Ashanti mm. region. It was a very big showing. Okay. Uh, it actually typifies the spirit. Mm. If you were there, you thought that this was as if we are rekindling that mm. spirit mm. in uh, 1957. Right. Uh, and you can see it. It was there. People defy the weather. Uh, it was hot. It was long. Uh, but people enjoyed it thoroughly. Uh, everybody who was part of it, uh, I think, after the program mm. felt some satisfaction. It was a renewal of the spirit of independence, mm -hmm. and I hope that it carries us through the rest of our pursuit this year. Thank you to the Ashanti region for hosting us, and uh, special thanks to the Mensha Palace as well, the two for Osaiti to the second and his team for gracing the occasion, our friends from Trinidad and Tobago. But let's talk about Women's Day. I, mean, I, I see a lot of stories here. I'm sure that the, the, the call for equality and the gender movement is key. The affirmative action bill uh, and, and matters arising. Maybe we would like to take a few visuals just to remind you what's happening. And then uh, we can safely agree or disagree 
if it is time yet, whether we are pussyfooting or whether we are not actually recognizing the efforts of women in every sphere of our national life. What exactly is holding us from granting them that equality they so deserve, as has been said over and over again. So we would like to start the conversation, but let me also quickly introduce my panelists from the side of the NDC. The Honorable Alasa Suhini is the Member of Parliament for the Tamale North constituency. He has won his primaries, and hopefully he will get to represent his people one more time in Parliament. Alaji, welcome. Good morning. How are you doing? Uh, good morning. Thank you very much for We're fine. the invitation. Alhamdulillah, I'm terrific. How about you? Alive and well. I'm greater than Accra. I'm greater than Accra. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then you are great, indeed. <laughs> I'm greater than Accra. Anyway, let's start uh, from the International Women's Day. The conversation is on, and some people think we have not celebrated our women enough. Some say we have not given them the equality that they so deserve. Some say we still look at them from a cultural background of thinking that they must play second fiddle to men. Some also say that, look, women are doing the most in many fields that you can find them, but the kind of light that we shine on them is as if we reluctantly do so. Richard, do you think these views hold true? Well, uh, thank you and uh, good morning to your viewers, uh, yourself and my brother. Uh, just a small correction. Uh, I am not the deputy director of uh, communication. Oh, you the left NDA. that post. Uh, I'm only the executive director of Dumco Institute. Okay, we didn't get that memo. Okay, well, well you're getting it now. Okay, <laughs> so you're saying it, this official? I I am not the deputy director of communication for okay. MPP. Because because when uh, sorry, but <laughs> when your appointment to the Dumco Institute yeah. came, yeah. we we didn't get we didn't get a memo to say. Henceforth, the, you cease you, to be a deputy communication. You director. get you get memos to important things. You didn't get memo to this because it's not that important. Uh, okay. The key thing is, uh, I'm the executive it's director of, of that question. You, you were deputy that, director for of communication for a big party in power, uh, and you were swapping Johnny, positions. Johnny, and you say it is Johnny, not let's, important. Let's, let's no, stick no, I'm, 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 I, I agree. Let's just stick to this. I just wanted so to make that correction. You're yes, saying that yes, the executive director. It's not a correction. It's not as if we knew and we were misquoting okay. it. Okay, good. You, you kept us in the dark. Misinformation. You know, you have a very important topic this morning. But which this is, is also about, important. Yes, yes, yes. So you are just the Dunkwa Institute boss. Exactly. You are, you are no longer which suffices, yes. director. Which suffices, yes. That suffices, yes. Okay, great. Okay. The, the issue about women, I think that is important. Uh, Sometimes I suppose I have a feeling that it should go without saying okay. uh, that uh, just as men, women are functionally uh, able to do what men can do. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just a question of uh, passion. It's a question of uh, maybe interest and uh, aptitude that guides all of us into what pursuits we engaging in life. And mm -hmm. therefore, if a woman wants to become a uh, footballer she can become, she wants to become a president, she can become, mm -hmm. the space is open. Often uh, that for me is a given. Uh, maybe society has some construct that makes it difficult perhaps for women to move into certain uh, career uh, uh, pursuits. But I think uh, we have come a very long way. All right. I recall very clearly when the former First Lady, uh, Madame, uh, Mrs. Rollins, okay. uh, in the famous Beijing uh, platform declaration, I think that, that, that ushered a new, a new awakening in our country. And I think that we've come a very long way. And, and today, if you look in the, uh, in the space, the public space most mm. especially, you see women doing very incredible things. And all we have to do is to encourage women uh, to seize the moment mm. and to do things that hitherto was seen as the preserve of men mm -hmm. and that their talents and their you know contributions are just as critical as mm. men uh, the one thing i sometimes cringe when we have this conversation is to appear as if we're patronizing women to say let's do certain things let's make certain adjustments for them assuming that they are their person, or they cannot do that on their is own. That, is that not clear enough? Uh, yes. So I, sometimes we are asked not to even contest women when they 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 bring themselves up for 
positions because yeah. well it is it is uh, to encourage them to do yeah. the most yeah i think in, in in public position like in politics for example the reason that is reasonable to do is because given the rugged nature of the terrain uh, women necessarily don't want to engage in that space so when you're making adjustment in that space it makes sense so you can encourage them not to get ahead of the banter and to but it's not as if given the given a chance they wouldn't be able to banter the well mm. and so i don't want us to you know i, I think we, we should do that but i personally just cringe because i believe inherently that women mm. are very well equipped to do anything a man can do right. uh, but then uh, we just need some um, awareness creation and mm. maybe some if you like uh, engagement to bring them into those spaces especially in our part of the world where women uh, were traditionally perceived to be doing certain things not that mm -hmm. they were cast in doing so but okay. then by social mm -hmm. roles and uh, norming they they found themselves in those roles but i i was uh, very happy mm -hmm. and that clearly uh, there are a lot of women that i know who are out there doing very incredible stuff and i we commend them we celebrate them and we encourage them to do more the, the conversation about whether or not we we have given them enough space your party for example and now you say uh, uh don't quite see, so i don't know if i to address no feel free you can just address MPP yes or, just bring okay. the issue yeah. so your party for example said that 30 percent of your appointees will be women if you look at the scale now you have not done even 15 percent mm. is it words against deeds or what because there's a women's manifesto there's been a consistent call to have the affirmative action law and you made a promise that you were going to have 30% of your appointees as women. So yes, we have uh, anti Frema, we have a, a couple of them. But if you look at the totality, even for ministerial positions, how many women are in there? Well, you know, Johnny, if you look at it progressively, uh, we have come a long way, especially in this uh, President Akufado's government. Uh, the percentage of women uh, have increased. Now, when you set a target for yourself, we are not able to achieve it. That is one thing. But then the clear intention to mm. do more is there, and demonstrably more has been done. Um, my, my, my hope is that more women will avail themselves. You can set those targets, but if you know you don't know what happens in the background when the appointment is given to women, say no, that one I won't, I won't do it. So there's, there's, uh, there's uh, commitment. Are you, that are you suggesting that they've been offered? I'm just saying I don't know. Said, I don't know. That's why I said you don't know. I don't know what happens. Uh, but then the thing is, we need to understand that in the space of politics, mm -hmm. increasingly there is evidence that women really are not uh, very amenable to the space is progressing. We are seeing more and more women. Mm -hmm. What we have to do is to continue to support more women when they okay. step forward and they want to engage. Mm -hmm. We'll give them the space to engage. But, mm -hmm. Johnny, I maintain the position. Let's not appear to be patronizing women mm -hmm. because I think and I believe that women have the quality and the capability to do it. If they want to do it, they'll come forward. But then they will, the platform must be there. But mm -hmm. let's not appear as if that, oh, we might just carry any woman because we want women to be there. Women will come forward okay. once the, the space is provided. And they will come forward. Okay. Okay. The, the highest achieved uh, for ministerial appointments since 1993 is 24% for women. For cabinet appointments, it is 15.8%. On the average, with the highest being 31.6%. The judiciary has more men in superior uh, positions, in the, in the judges and courts, uh, as well as lower courts than women. And I've had two female chief justices says independence. That's um, Georgina Theodora Wood, her ladyship, and uh, also uh, her ladyship, Sophia Kufu. Now, we have only had one female speaker of parliament. I'm going to see you on this one um, since independence. If you consider the number of women that are appointed into political positions, you can actually count them and handpick them. So have we been fair to our women, given the fact that our population says they are more than men, they are over 50%, and yet when we share the national cake, as someone will say it, we don't find them. We find just a handful of them. Have we been fair to them? Well, Johnny, over the years, history has not been fair to women. Mm -hmm. And so it's not just about us. It's not just about Ghana. But the question is uh, as to what we are mm. doing, you know, mm. about that. Mm. Uh, how are we uh, working to change that narrative? Mm -hmm. 
uh, women in the past even had to, you know, march and fight to uh, get equal pay right. for, you know, equal jobs mm -hmm. done. Um, and many other things that mm -hmm. they have had to fight for. So generally our society is patriarchal. It's, 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 it's more mm -hmm. constructed for, you know, men mm -hmm. than it is accommodative of women. <coughs> and I think that for me, mm -hmm. who is a dad of girls, I want to ensure that uh, I do not just talk about the need for, you know, our girls to be able to mm -hmm. become anything they want to be in life. Mm -hmm. But I want to say that to my kids at home and believe it. Mm -hmm. I want to say that and believe that they can really be anything that they want to mm -hmm. be. And the only way we can all say that to our, you know, uh, girls who are daughters mm -hmm. or sisters or mothers mm -hmm. and believe it is to ensure that we remove the roadblocks right. that are, you know, on their way. And it is not just for us to reserve a day such as uh, the World International Day right. uh, where we will, you know, uh, make speeches, beautiful mm -hmm. ones, mm -hmm and heap accolades on them. It is how we ensure that at our workplaces, you know, the ethics mm. that we exude, the, you know, um, um, even in our private life, the standards that we uphold mm. uh, are not predatory of the female folk, are not discriminatory. And, and that is the only way we can help them to achieve uh, to the best of their ability. They, they've been calling for I am affirmative happy. action law, for example, I am. for Parliament to prioritize the passage of that law. And it looks like we're doing the pull and push like we did with the RTI and many others. Is it time yet? I, I am happy about, you know, um, the progress that we have been making mm. as a country. I am, however, disappointed that so far we have not been able to get the affirmative uh, law mm. uh, you know passed and it's not just an issue of you know parliament dragging mm. its feet it's actually you know um, a bill that is sponsored by the executive right. and so parliament have very little to do okay. when the executive does not show mm. you know the commitment and goodwill mm. towards the passage of a bill it is, it is, for example, the leader of government business in mm. Parliament mm. that determines the yes. activities. Mm. And that is why many, you know, um, civil society organizations in the field of uh, women empowerment are mm. very disappointed in the president mm -hmm. because he made that pledge in opposition. Right. In his first state of the nation address, he promised to get it passed. In the second state of the nation address, I think he just uh, brushed mm. over it without indicating where it was. Right. And I think in his third state of nation address, he did not even mention it at all. And in the last state of the nation address, he didn't mention it at all. And it is not, you know, uh, uh, properly before parliament as we speak. So that's lack it of commitment. Exactly. It tells you the commitment level of, of, of the president as far as this, the passage of this bill is concerned. And remember, this is also a president who has also, you know, said that our women... Uh, have not been amplified enough. Mm -hmm. uh, they have not really put themselves in positions that makes them, you know, deserving mm -hmm. of, of, of some of the positions that people think that they should be having. And again, I was, I think that the women were right when they took issues with that and mm -hmm. criticized him heavily. And one would have thought that in making amends, he would have uh, perhaps begun to do things mm. like pass the uh, affirmative uh, law and other actions that will ensure that perhaps he listened to their uh, 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 reservations mm. and is meeting them uh, halfway or making the efforts to make amends. But very characteristic of this government, uh, know it all, listen to nobody and do as you please. You don't seem to get the sense that uh, all the venom, mm. if I will describe it as such, all the criticism that people, you know, raise based on that position that he took uh, is yielding any results. 
you know, you just mentioned that the, 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 we have only had one speaker yeah, of parliament. Yeah, one female speaker. Yeah, that was under President yes. uh, Joyce uh, for that, though. Yes, uh, the NDC administration. And it is the highest position mm -hmm. any woman has ever attained in this country. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and, and I think that we will get there, you know. When? We, That's the question. We, we, we first of all have to change the structures. Is it because we can't find the women to appoint or... Or what? Well, sometimes I've had people with appointing authority mm -hmm. complain about how difficult it is to get the woman to appoint. But the issue is not with, the difficulty is not with getting qualified women. Mm -hmm. There are so many qualified women. Right. They are abundant of talent, mm -hmm. you know, that you can choose from right. but the structures mm. make it even very difficult for those women mm. to accept those appointments in some cases okay. the structures and that's why we need to dismantle those you know uh, structures that make it very difficult for women okay. to to function a social structure in, for example yes for, for example you go to um, um some institutions and women are only seen to be doing well because they are connected you know, sometimes sexually, mm, the perception, mm, I mean, mm. to some people. Why should that be the case? Why should people think that women who we sit in class with, mm. who beat us sometimes in exams, right. you know, are not capable of, you know, uh, 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 earning the promotions that they get at our workplaces? Why? You know, these are some of the things. <laughs> we, we live in a society where it is the belief of some people that women in politics... Mm. Uh, uh, I, 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 I cannot be trusted when it comes to being faithful with their partners. The, some people think that for you to rise on the political ladder, you may have some yeah, engagements. So. It is so difficult for people to accept relationships between males and females in our society without thinking of any you know, amorous mm -hmm. relationship mm -hmm. between them. And, and those are the structures that I'm talking about. Right. And perhaps... People are, some people have also been raised, especially men, to think that they are, it is their right to prey on women. You know, so, so, so he's a boss, and even when the woman is doing so well, you know, in the office setting, he still thinks that for her to get promotion, she has to do something more than just right. the professional, you know, output that she's, she's, mm -hmm. she's given. And, 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 and that. I mean, that has to change. Okay. Those are the structures I'm right. saying that we need to dismantle. Mm. Okay. And, and perhaps when women are more comfortable in working professionally and without all those, you know, uh, 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 ridiculous tags, mm. it will not be difficult to get women to appoint when you are in an appointing authority because they are qualified. Mm. A lot of them are qualified. R Richard, let me bring you in on this one. The Suhini raises a very... Uh, important point about structures and the thought that as soon as a woman gets up there means that she's, she might have slept her way through. In fact, the MP4 has seen North, Honorable Kennedy a Japan, a strong member mm. of your party, mm. had cause to mm. call Madame Charlotte Ose, yeah. who was her first electoral commissioner names and even say she slept her way through. Yeah. Fast forward, we've had Anda Nanaku Fado another electoral commissioner in the person of uh, Dr. Jean Mensah, who is also female, which is good for the women fraternity and for all of us. Yeah. But should we be calling our people who seek to denigrate the dignity of women who, like you said, may find it difficult at some point, not because they are not qualified, to accept positions because of some of these low comments that are thrown at them? Should we be calling them out? Well, Johnny, I... <coughs> My brother just stepped in a few places that I don't think was really good for the conversation. Okay, this you, you answer my question uh, first. I'll answer your way. question, but it's important for me to uh, be aware of what he's saying and the nature of the conversation we want to have this morning. Uh, you see, we're talking about women, and generally, when you look at the history and the, <coughs> the forward movement of women in our politics, mm -hmm. Uh, and unfortunately, we have reduced this conversation to politics mm. as oh. where women are functionally needed. Mm. Okay, But that is not where you should look across the social spectrum and say that where women are engaged mm -hmm. anywhere, 
they are functionally capable, <coughs> just like men, to mm -hmm. deliver. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's not make it political appointment and all of these things. They are, it's essentially part of it. But when we reduce it to that, and that is why I said earlier, it's a question of passion. Have we done any, is there any understanding to say, mm -hmm. any insight to say women compared to men mm -hmm. are just as equally interested in politics? You understand? I can guesstimate right now to say if you ask about 10 women, mm -hmm. maybe about just about two or three will say I'm interested in politics because of the rugged nature of it. Right. So they are not willing to avail themselves in the space and to begin with. that's because people talk down at them and, and try I'm sorry. to no, no, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, but no. that's just, no. that's just, that's just, ah. That's please. just a patronizing comment no, that he please, made right please, there. Please, please. To suggest so, that, so any, so any, to know, to suggest so that any, politics so is a rugged so fraud. And so women so are not so comfortable so with it. Those are the structures. Let's be disciplined. Those are the structures I spoke So any, please. Richard, make progress. I am telling you that there is no scientific insight to say that just as many women as men are interested in politics. We don't have that. So let's not reduce this discussion to politics in essence. I, I'm saying that. And, so, I'm, and I'm also, my question to you yeah. is that... I'll ask your question. Look, I, I know your women, question. Women, it, 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 it feeds into this one. Women are capable. Yes. They are competent. Yeah. They are confident. Yeah. It is because society looks on while a few people denigrate their dignity. I forget, I forget if, I, if my wife was to aspire to become a member of parliament mm -hmm. and somebody would say she's been sleeping around before she gets uh, a position. Yes. I would not be happy, and she would not be happy. So she would rather stick Johnny, to her, Johnny, Johnny, her hospitality Johnny, business. Johnny, please. And not, let's and let's not, not make it. this conversation about honorable candidate Japan. Let's I, not, I'm not, no, no, hold on, hold on. I'm trying to tell you. The reason I, I think you're trying to make it about him is this. You say society. How many people called Madame Charlotte say any name? I'm not saying. No, no, let's let's no. not make it about Charlotte to say. No, if that's there what you are, mentioned. There, no, no, hold on, hold on. There are so many women. Look, allow me to answer your question. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I think you're getting me wrong. Hold you on. mentioned two people's hold name hold and you make it society. I, I am saying using, that is society. I am using uh, it to represent the whole. In fact, in the December 2019 local level elections, we hosted women here who said they had been called names. It's not about Charlotte or say. Or about Kennedy Japan. I, I, I have not heard. Should we Johnny. call out people who try to put mud on persons or women who have the competence, the confidence, and the commitment to want to get into the limelight, but are dragged down? I'm not, let's not make it about Kennedy Japan. But that's what you say. cited. And so you see, the truth of the matter is this we need to get to a point where we are moving forward in this country. This kind of backpedaling conversation, which my brother here is trying to do about uh, President Akufado and all of these things about affirmative action, those are not the forward movement conversation we want to have. The point of the matter is this, that we must create equal opportunity for our women to participate. Our politics, if it has any, num any number of women, mm. you can do, you can te have your texts get involved in this, to see that would women looking at the, the, the texture of our conversation in politics, would women be interested in getting involved in that conversation? I, they are I, not interested. I don't, I don't understand you when you say the texture. The, how coarse the political discussion is. That includes insulting women and denigrating uh, them. Should we be calling Johnny, people Johnny, out Johnny, for Johnny, doing please, that? Let's focus. What I'm trying to tell you is that if you look at, if you don't know how, how the, neck, the texture of our conversation in politics is, then maybe I'm not the one to educate you. But what I'm trying to I'm say is that... I'm not a novice in politics. I, but you're me. asking me a question which I know you know. Okay? Mm. The point is that our politics is such that it doesn't appeal to women. That one is not a question you have to debate with me. You just can throw it to your viewers. They will tell and, you. And, and so we're saying that it's a question of interest, number one. But the women who have shown up, if you look at the tradition that mm. I belong mm. to, and you look at the, the involvement and the progress of women participation, mm. you cannot fault my tradition for not doing anything. And, and I'm saying that. And we have come forward, mm. apparently, because we in the, uh, the, the MPP have moved a, a conversation and gotten a lot of women involved. In fact, this president... Mm started a lot of initiatives. The, the most recent one is the He for She campaign that he started. Mm. What is it is that it's trying to create an atmosphere for women to engage. And I am saying that on a day when we are celebrating women, let's focus on the positive things that women have done. 
well, let's focus on things that we can continuously do and reform mm. to ensure mm. that women participate and find appetite to join the political discussion. Let's make our discussions about issues, okay. about <coughs> policy, mm. not about this backpedaling and name calling. Okay. Let's focus because they, I believe, mm. Johnny, I believe mm. that just like any man, if you take any one man or any two men, and you put women side by side, they are capable of doing it. everything a man can do okay. just as perfect. So, so but the thing about it is that mm -hmm. when it comes to a political space, the, the nature of our conversation, how rugged it is, even the cost involved, okay, financial involvement makes it so prohibitive for women. Let's have conversations about that. Okay. Let's not begin so, to call so, about honorable mm, this, honorable uh, that. Answer my, answer my, question, this and answer this. my question now. Yeah, what's your question? Should we, as a country, begin to start calling out men who go at women because they want to get onto a political space or they deserve a certain appointment and they will denigrate their dignity. Should we start calling them, no matter who they are? Should we start calling them out and say, what you did is wrong, stop it. Don't denigrate a woman to say, she for example has slept around, she's supposed to have taken some money, she's done this because her system is, should that be the first step to try to make it easier for mm -hmm. women to get in them, to play in the field, you to say, is very cost. Should we call them out? Yeah, Johnny, the first step is to uh, ensure that the, the playing field is leveled. Uh, I don't think calling people out is any, uh, any more effective than doing what we must do to engage women in the space. Uh, and also the next thing is women themselves finding we shouldn't be seen. That's what I said by patronizing. We shouldn't be seen as trying to shepherd women in that direction. Mm -hmm. They must find the passion in themselves. And increasingly, more women are finding the passion in themselves. Knowing how, how the rough the terrain is, mm -hmm. they say, this is what we want to do because this is our life's mission. And they find themselves, when, when, they when, have a vision when you say, to want to when advance. You say, when you say it is rough, I, I find it difficult to accept. You know why? Mm -hmm. If we believe that men and women are equal and capable of doing the same things if they have the same qualification, Sweeney, for example, says sometimes they even beat us in exam, which is true. Yeah. If we have that mindset and we can survive in it, why can't the woman survive in it? Is it because of how we choose to welcome them in or how we try to pierce them while they are in there? And I'm making a classic example of saying that, not just Charlotte or say Kennedy Japan. Not there's so many of them. In fact, there was an instance here about um uh, Apo, mm. deputy mm. minister for mm. gender under Mahama uh, with uh, yeah, Nano Yelita and mm. Victoria Hammer. You, you remember their mm. issue. Mm. So I'm, I'm saying that should we start calling out people as a first step to say, if we stop this, mm. it will help to make the situation easier for women to go. Should we, should we do that? Johnny, what, what do you think we shouldn't do that? No, no I'm, I'm not saying that. Yeah, yeah, give it so, a second chance. Okay. Should so, we call so them out? Listen, listen. Calling people out mm, doesn't solve the problem. Mm -hmm. It only gives oxygen to those comments. That's why you are still talking about honorable candidate, Japan, Charlotte, or say up until now. Mm -hmm. Women are not interested in that. They are if, not. If, they because, are not. because if you don't give public... Women audience, are not listen, interested in listen, that. If you don't give currency mm -hmm. to those comments... It's re it is del is relegated to the background. No. People, you understand? People follow and I'm that telling example. you, I'm telling you that people this morning, follow that example. Johnny, Johnny, hold on. How many years ago? And you are resurrecting that conversation. And if I engage in that and so he's right, he's wrong, he's right, he's wrong, then we are promoting that conversation. Let's forget about it. What is good about the women agenda is that today, back in the day when all this thing about women involvement and women participation was key, mm. it was about education. Because we thought that women, even if they go to, a, uh, they go to school, they end up marrying and mm. therefore it was not effective. Our cultural background, mm. it was not effective. It was not actually seen as the, the thing to do for women to go to school. Mm. But today, that is not the case. That is a women forward movement. So it's not about politics and the appointment of it. That is a parochial, very tunnel vision discussion of the matter. Let's be... It's not it. No, no, The president no. said 30% you know, of his appointees... Johnny, Johnny, hold on, hold on, hold on for me. Mm -hmm. When you say it's not about politics and appointment... Yes, I because then you I, reduce I, it I, I disagree. The president stood on a campaign platform and yeah. said 30% of his appointees yes. should be women. Yes. So that could include the position for Dankwa Institute yes. or deputy for communication. Yeah. In fact, 
until you left the MPP communication but you know, bureau. You know, you know, until you left the MPP communication bureau. Just, just, let's how, don't keep how going many, back. No, no, I'm asking, I'm asking you. Even within the structure of the MPP, yeah. director of communication, yeah. and you have about four deputy directors of communication. We have about ten. Maybe ten. Yeah. How many of them are women? We have two that are women. Two. Yes. What is the population of... You see, let's, you see, so you see, Johnny, we, please, please, please. We are sharing the cake. No, no, no. And we are not allowing Johnny, them to there is no the cake. cake that is being shared at that level. We were talking about women participate. Do you know mm -hmm. that there was a time in this country, or even in human history, okay. where women beyond the kitchen were not seen to be welcome? Do you know that? Mm -hmm. We have gone past that. So it is not about politics. It's about providing space for women to find their level in life. Okay. So that based on their passion, based on what they think they can do, based on what they think is their life destiny's work, mm. they can get anywhere they want to do. Today, if a woman wants to be a politician, there's no roadblock to that. Mm. That is the conversation. So when you begin to do cherry pick and do all these things, you are not helping. You are progressively patronizing women. I don't think that is necessary. No the calling of names at this person, if we don't give currency to that this morning by saying OCBC call somebody by name and that, we are not promoting that discussion. You, you, think, but you, you, think, you, that, you think that somebody will not be learning from that? Considering the prominence of these well, this if individual, the person, if the person sees that when if, the person if, said if that it was ignored, if it goes you know, unpunished, what do you, how do you punish somebody for that? But I'm just saying, if we, as you know, objective society, we think I will not call anybody by that, I will not refer to anybody in those terms, and if somebody says so, and we don't give that currency. It doesn't get that oxygen to thrive. It dies. And nobody learns from that. So I'm saying that let's not even repeat that conversation. But let's say the good things that women can do and, it's, and say that if any woman is passionate about public policy, if any woman is passionate about doing politics, mm. if any woman is passionate about being MP, today the opportunity exists. If you look in our party recently, even when the filing fees and everything that was done, there was an adjustment for women so they can participate. Cost is prohibitive, but so they've gone ahead to create a platform that will allow women to do uh, to get involved. And I'm saying that this conversation is important, but Johnny, by all means, let's not make the progress of women solely about politics because there are fantastic things that women are doing. There are women, uh, you know, engineers up and down yesterday, uh, Sunday, uh, Friday in Kumasi, there were women in the army, you know, falling down from the aircraft and doing wonderful things. Really Those are things telling. we should talk, you understand? Okay. Mm -hmm. Those are things that we should talk about. But when you get this kind of narrowed conversation trying to score political points you, you, up you, and down, you, you I don't you, find you, it you, to be you think, constructive you think, for us. society. You think talking about, about, uh, the things we are discussing now, yeah. political appointments, etc., for women is narrow. If you, uh, Johnny, you should listen to me. You reduce it to that. That's not the only thing. We have not talked about how women have come forward in terms of education. There are women doctors, there are women engineers, women, everything in our society. Is mm -hmm. only politics what we do in this country? That's not true. Okay. Is, that, is politics the only thing women want to do? That's not true. Okay. But okay. before then, you didn't have a women pilot. Did you have one? We, no, because... Didn't. Are you speaking out of... Fact? I'm saying that when the history of women emancipation began, mm. women were consigned to the kitchen. Right. That was, the, that was where we started from. Mm. But we have come a long way where across the spectrum, women are functionally present and they are doing key things. So you are satisfied with the involvement of women in, in every sphere of life? Is that what you're saying? Is that what I'm getting from? I am saying that we have progressed and we are progressing. Are you satisfied? But you see, uh, it's not about me satisfied or not. You can never be satisfied about anything. You have to continuously engage in progress okay. and improving. Today, we had, in our, even in our country, a female presidential candidate in this country. You understand? Haven't we have that? We have come a long way. They, they, Let's celebrate that and stop this for kind a female of vice presidential candidate. Absolutely. Absolutely. Let's call for that. That's, that's a good conversation. Okay. But this kind of downward-looking, pessimistic kind of discussion, for mm -hmm. me, is only patronizing it by individuals who are not really committed. Okay. Tell me their tradition, what they have done to okay. advance so women. You when you talk about not to one speaker, we talk about I think that we talk about chief justices that we appointed really in this country. Yeah, 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 so that I'm not sure that you. time is up and we are wrapping up. Because he's raised a number of issues. Let me ask you the same question. You didn't come early. Should we start with you? I was waiting for you. Excuse me, let me run my show, please. Should we start 
calling out people who denigrate the dignity of women who want to get into leadership positions, whether it's in business, politics, wherever it is? Should we start calling them out? First of all, we need to understand what is at stake. We are celebrating International Women's Day. And right here on this set, mm. even though my brother has tried to, you know, refine what he initially said, he suggested that mm. our politics is so ragged right. that women cannot, you know, or do not find it, you know, uh, uh, appealing or cannot play in that game. That's mm. the way he put it. And I said that it is patronizing because when we are talking about the, 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 the blocks, the perceived you know, uh, 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 abilities mm. that we have of women and where we place them in society. That, those are some of the mindsets that we need to change. That because it is rugged, women can play in it. Is it rugged, really? It is, but women have played in more rugged areas. And so they can. But how can we make it in such a way that it is not um discriminatory to women and that is where your question comes in it can be rugged but non-discriminatory mm. but so far what we have is a discriminatory platform and that is why those examples you gave are relevant to this discussion and that is why again we need to understand that talking about the affirmative action it's not just politics when 20 NGOs come together to call on the president mm. of the republic to pass the affirmative action, they are not just doing politics. They are not just reducing women empowerment to a narrow thing like my brother is suggesting. Mm. Maybe he doesn't understand the topic. But even in that law, mm. we are talking about decision making. Putting women, giving opportunity to women to occupy decision-making positions. That, that's narrow, according to... Uh, and so if you describe that as a narrow view or narrowing it to just politics, then you don't understand what is at stake. Again, the bill talks about, answers the question that you asked. Mm. The bill actually suggests that anyone who denigrates a woman simply because the person is vying for position should be liable for prosecution that is what we are talking about so it is not just narrow unless you don't understand what is at stake so when 20 ngos say what i just said mm. that perhaps the disappointment that they feel that the president has not passed the thing. It's not just reducing it to narrow politics. Well, your backpedaling. Unless, of course, he wants to vindicate me when I say that people in government, like himself, I'm not in government. Well, so you know his that. party people in government, like they say, we are just from Kumasi, Omonti Jai. Like they don't listen to anybody. They 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 think they have all the knowledge in this world. That, that's that is what I that's no, listen. That is what I said. That perhaps the president is not acting in ways to show that he is making amends after that his amplified speech. Mm. And he's meeting the women halfway or showing remorse because perhaps he doesn't care. Richard so when Richard have, tells we have, me we have pile of female pilots, no, now we have no when Richard soldiers, tells me that that is a narrow argument, mm. then he vindicates me. Actually, that's narrow because allow, you allow reduce allow everything to politics. Allow that allow is me. not politics. Allow I'm me. telling you, allow I'm me. telling you, you what is heard. what is the use of politics if it cannot provide you know a level playing field for everybody? There, there's no cake that's being shared, right? No. Yeah. What is the use of the politics that we do if it is not why do we why do we talk of free SHS? <laughs> is it not to give equal opportunity to every child to have education? Jesus is Christ. that politics? Should we dismiss free SHS because it's politics? Johnny. No, it is not. So when I say pass the affirmative action, you know, law, <laughs> it's not politics. Because you have not passed it, you say it's politics, let's forget it. When you pass it, you begin to tell me how relevant and important it is. Let us not do that. Johnny. The double standards in this country. Let me clarify is not, a thing. Please, a please, please, please. Let me let me finish. No, the double standards in our in our conversations sometimes make the voters, you know, 
uh, develop a certain level of apathy towards the politics. Have we all made progress? We've made some progress. <laughs> I didn't. I didn't dispute that in my in my initial submission. Right. I talked about how women, even in the past, mm. had to match for equal pay, yeah. for equal jobs. Mm. And I talked about how we went as far as ha having the first female speaker of parliament, the highest, you know, any woman has ever attained. Because you're talking about, well, how about the, the chief second, justices. Won't the chief justice is the third arm of government. No, I'm saying that. How about them? They also, also have high office, so say that one too. You see because the, the NDC appointment, you, you, like, you, like, you, like, you see the politics is doing. You see the politics is doing, and yet he turns around around to condemn politics. You talk about women achievement. Okay. No, you said right. speak. I said, what about the chief justices? Say that one too. I'm why, speaking, why would you say I'm that? speaking in superlative terms. Oh come on, superlative. I said we have gone to the highest position yeah. of having a first female speaker. That is superlative. So when you tell me that I should come back to judiciary. We are talking about presidency. That's the executive. Second yes. arm of government is there. No, it's not true. Second it's arm not, of government. Second arm. They are co-equal arms of government. So please don't kind of don't, don't confuse. No, no. Don't confuse they students. Are co don't arms of confuse government. students there is out no, there. No, no, please. Parliament is not superior to the executive. The executive is not superior to parliament. The judiciary is not superior to executive. How many arms Neither. of government were you we talking? My place, please. Just, no, how many arms talking. of government were you talking? Please, go ahead. Go ahead. Rich, Rich. No. How many it's arms of government were you talking? Thing you are doing here. Don't answer questions now. No, no, no. But, but, but please, <laughs> let, let's go. No. For the sake, you see, oh, by journalists, Jesus journalists, Christ. you are to say educate and it. inform. Stop yeah. this. Don't, don't refuse to educate. How many arms of government were you taught? There are students watching you. I don't answer questions. Obviously. You had three arms of yes. government. And then you had the first arm of government. I just mentioned the executive. executive. So, thing you're so I'm about. saying that the executive, of course, is the first arm. Mm. The second arm of government is the legislature. And I'm saying we have gone to the highest level no, of the legislature. Poor, there's no highest. They are on the same level. And then you tell me I should come back and mention judiciary. But that's just, see, that's neither here nor there. That's neither here nor there. I am not, but, but you, you see, okay, I understand okay, you're not a student listen, of politics, I understand. But listen, there are listen. equal branches of government. There is no one above the other. I am, I, am, I, am, I am not talking about which one is higher than the other. I'm talking that's about what you're saying. Now you are speaking to politics. Yes, it means the executive is higher. It's not. Richard. They are on the same Richard. plane. Richard. That's it. Richard. The executive so, appoints so, them all. Hold on. Richard. No, no. But it doesn't Richard. position them Richard. above them. But the executive appoints no, them all. No, no, no. Please, please. It's Richard. a matter of fact. Richard. So now you are confused when the president, because when the you simply president do not understand out. what is happening. Okay, that's fine. You know, no, no. You can revise when you leave. When the president is out of the jurisdiction. Johnny, am I done already? Hold on. Hold on for me. Goodness. When the president is out of the jurisdiction, the vice president takes over. Yeah. When the vice president is not there, the speaker of parliament takes over. Not the judge. Not the chief justice. When the speaker is not there, the yeah. chief justice takes over. That is hierarchy. Does he, does he yeah. talk about hierarchy and and the ranking in the in the three arms? No, no, it's a functional position. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> when you look at the construction of our constitution, okay, we have three arms of government, co-equal branches of government. Just Google that in there. I mean, this is fun, fundamental okay. understanding of policy. When, so when, please, when are we, when taking, are we, when are we taking the affirmative action? Uh, so what I'm trying the, to the say, the women group are saying Johnny, that you Johnny. should push it in March so that you can have it passed. Yes, are you going to do that? Absolutely. This president yeah, is committed to that. Me out again yes, the right. president <laughs> is committed to that. Mm. And I'm telling you that if you are looking for any president who is committed to women's agenda, it is not Suhini who sits here and talk about it against Akufuado. Okay. He, he has demonstrated because, because that. Because he doesn't he have has Suhini lived that. In that. That's all. You see? Who he has dared Suhini to that. say the truth? Oh, no, please. Because oh, you are not yes. credible. You are not credible when you speak those things. Oh. What the affirmative action is talking That's about. Why, what has his government done about it in eight years? Because it's not. He yeah. comes from a place where they don't have the credibility to talk about that matter. Oh, Please, the amazing. record is out there for everybody to see. Goodness. I am passionate about this issue because we must make honest progress. The thing I was talking about reducing it to okay. politics is that he's making it about political appointment only. But How women, women, that? that's what you're doing. How women, do do women have come forward. There this are a lot of positions. women, women uh, professionals today. We must celebrate you, that. You, it is not you, all about politics. Thirty percent. Of your how, how many how many per, uh, percentage of women have uh, Kufaru appointed? You tell if, me. If, you check. You are the one you, criticizing you this. Not. How many? You have. We have over one hundred twenty-nine ministers. How many of them are women? Woefully, it's woefully. not. It's not. It's not ministers only no, that are appointed. Right. Okay. You agree? Okay. Chief okay. executives. Yes. How many? Huh? I don't know no, the percentage. We'll but see you. We'll see you after the break. Thank you. It's so far better. Than back. Back.
uh, they are the appointed the and they are not the ones to come and criticize of the Dampa Institute. And he is, he says he's no longer the deputy communications director for the NPP. And also, Alassane Sonini is a member of parliament for the Tamale North constituency. And he's here, he's been here on the ticket of the NDC. So, uh, if where is that you are no longer the deputy communications director? I am the, the executive, director, executive director. Okay, yeah, but that's a fact. But you it's speak for branded. the MPP as it's well. No, I, I speak. It's called brand. Okay. As you, an executive. You just spoke as for executive. The MPP. Yeah. No, I speak as executive. You keep making that mistake. Okay, <laughs> I speak for the Dampa Institute. In I, I share. Oh, please allow me. This, yeah. is, important. this yeah. is important. This is important. Yeah. yeah. I speak but when you say when you say when you say I made a mistake, it's yeah. not as if you wrote no, not that, a not memo that to suggest to us. It's an honest mistake. Yes, okay. no, 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 not an honest mistake. mistake. I didn't make a mistake. Okay. You you didn't communicate. It, okay, so you, I did, don't you didn't know. make a mistake. I don't know. You didn't make a yeah. mistake. So what I'm saying is that I speak uh, as the executive director of Danko Institute. I only share the policy position of the MPP okay. where I sit. A time ago, when I was a party uh, spokesperson okay. or communicator, I speak purely for the party. But okay. today, I align with the party in terms of policy, okay. which is what we promote at the Dampa Institute. So when you appear on set, you are MPP? When I appear <laughs> on set, I speak from the position as a Dampa Institute uh, person, Align with, with the MPP. Okay. Listen, 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 listen align with the MPP on the account of the policy. Thank you. Thank you. That's it. You have rebranded. Thank yes. you very no, much. It's not a rebranding. It's just a positional thing that I'm trying to clarify for you.